Hello, God bless you. Welcome to our daily video where we take a daily look at the Bible verse. You know, we all get hungry when we eat and feed our physical bodies. But just as importantly, we need to be feeding our spiritual bodies. And we feed our spiritual body by getting along with God, praying, and reading the Bible. You can read a physical copy of the Bible, but if you cannot see to read the Bible, or you do not own a physical book, then you can read the Bible from a free Bible app on any device from one of the various free Bible websites or download a free Bible program on your computer. But it's so very important to be reading the Bible for yourself to feed your spiritual body. This spiritual food will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, and struggle. In these daily videos, we give you a verse of the day or an appetizer as I like to call it along with some discussion, which I pray will lead you to want to dust off your Bible and read the Bible for yourself. Read the verses before and after finish the chapter. Just feast on this living word. Because with all the misinformation and deception of this end time world, this Bible is the only truth that we have. So don't let someone else tell you what the truth is. Read the Bible for yourself. And don't even trust what I say or what anyone else says. No matter who they say they are, a pastor, teacher, evangelist, prophet, seer, it does not matter. They do not have the answers that you're looking for. Only God does. And you will receive your answers only through prayer and reading the Bible. Whether you rely on someone through the physical church, TV, radio, internet, no one can scratch the surface of what is inside this Bible. Hollywood can even match the stories in this book. So read and discover the stories for yourself. Today I want to show you a beautiful scripture and a beautiful revelation that we received in our Sunday school class. This is in Luke 22, we're going to read 59 through 62. In about the space of one hour, after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him. He is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spoke, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. You see what was beautiful about this revelation here, is this is one of the darkest times in Jesus' life. I mean, he's about to face complete torture for all of us. In this story, in two verses in 64, they talk about how Jesus is blindfolded. They start hitting him. and saying, prophesy, who, who hit you? And you know, so he gets hit, he gets spit on, and you know the whole story. If you don't go home and read it through all four Gospels, they pluck out his beard, they spit on him, they hit him. When they put the crown of thorns on his head, they start hitting him with the reed on his head, driving those thorns deep into his head. And these are not little, like little, little um, rose thorns. These are big thorns. So he down. So this is Jesus' darkest hour. He's about to face a brutal death. And Peter. You know, whenever Judas comes to show, bring, deliver Jesus to, to be condemned and get his money, Peter is all ready to fight. He pulls out a sword, cuts off the high priest's servant's ear, but now, and then now he follows Jesus to his trial, and then he denies him. You see, Jesus was in his darkest hour, and his friend, his close friend, one of the close three, his close friend abandons him in this time. Now we may, you may have experienced that yourself. You've had this time in your life where you felt like it was the darkest time in your life. And maybe you, like Jesus, have had pe people like Peter. You had friends that abandoned you. At the time when you really need someone the most, you were abandoned. You know, whenever Jesus went through this, when Peter denied Jesus in his darkest day and then fled away, leaving Jesus alone, this gives us the comfort that God will be with us in our darkest hours. God understands what we are going through because he faced it himself. So when you have those times when you feel like it's the darkest hour and you feel like everyone's forsaken you and you don't know where to turn, you don't know who will, who will come and help. Just lean on God. I always tell you, yeah, you should lean on God for everything. But in that situation that we're talking about, Jesus literally went through it. The darkest time 
that in his life he didn't have a friend to lean on. He didn't have anybody to lean on at all. He felt that abandonment like he may be feeling right now. So if you're feeling that abandonment right now, if you feel like you're going through something and no one, no one's there to help, cry out to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I'm going through this dark trial and no one's with me. No one will stand with me as I go through this. And he will be there with you because he already been through it. He knows exactly what you're going through. He said, they all abandoned me. Twelve friends. One betrays me, turns me in. Ten of them run away. One follows, but he runs away too. In Jesus' darkest hour, when he could have used a friend to lean on, he had no one. And if you're going through that right now, if you're going through something that you don't have a friend to lean on, lean on Jesus. He will be there and he'll comfort you and he will help you through any trial, tribulation, temptation, and struggle. Any burden you may have, just give it to the Lord. Just hand it over. On the screen is the gospel message told by the meanings of the names found in Genesis chapter 5. This is ten generations before the Jewish people were chosen as the chosen people through Abraham. This gospel message is a promise to everyone, Jew or Gentile. And if you don't know Jesus today, please allow me to introduce you to him. Jesus always existed. Jesus is God. Jesus left eternity. He left his throne in heaven. Jesus became flesh. Jesus was not an angel. He was not a ghost. He was not a prophet. Jesus was flesh and blood and bone, born of a virgin, 100% God and 100% man. Jesus lived a perfect sinless life. Jesus came to there just to die for us. And he was crucified on a cross, dying a brutal death, was buried in a tomb for three days and three nights, and he rose from the dead, proving that he is God, because death in the grave had no power over him. And to doubt any of this is to take away who Jesus said that he is. And if Jesus isn't who he said he is, then no one is worthy of salvation and we're still in our sins. Jesus is coming back soon to set up his earthly kingdom. The requirement into this kingdom is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. This is because God is perfect. God is holy. God cannot dwell with sin. God has a standard of perfection. And with that standard of perfection, there are rules. And because we live in a fallen world, we break these rules, we sin. Self-righteous people love to use the word sin and sinner as a weapon, but in reality the sin means that we are breaking God's rules and your thought or action, and the Ten Commandments alone show us that we cannot completely keep God's rules. The Bible is clear that no one is without sin. In fact, the Bible says if we say that we're perfect and we don't sin, we're lying to ourselves and we're calling God a liar. Because we all fall short, we all miss the mark, we all sin. Sin creates a separation, a valley between God and man. And with each sin, that valley gets wider and deeper. That sin is there because we live in a fallen world. And because of this separation, there is a punishment for us and it has to be paid. The wages of punishment for that sin is death. All of us face eternal judgment and separation from God because we break God's rules. And since no one is righteous, which means no one is perfect, something needs to bridge that valley of sin. And the only way to bridge that valley of sin to pay the penalty for our sin is by the shedding of blood the Bible says. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. In the Old Testament, they used the blood of an animal sacrifice. That animal sacrifice was only strong enough for one sin. Once they would sin again, they'd have to offer another animal. That animal sacrifice was like bridging our sin valley with a rope bridge. Once they had sinned, they would have to offer another animal because that valley would get wider and deeper and that rope bridge would snap. But unlike that animal sacrifice, which is only strong enough for one sin, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was so powerful that it paid for all sin. All of my sin, all of your sin. In fact, all the sins of everyone who believed in Jesus in his day about 2,000 years ago. All the way to today and all the way to the end of the world. And Jesus wants to save us from the penalty of our sins and give us eternal life. When Jesus died on the cross, he took our place, suffered God's wrath for us. The punishment that we deserve for our sins was poured out on Jesus. The Bible says that God gave his son to the world and died in our place. Jesus took our sins, nailed our sins to the cross with him, and Jesus shed his precious blood which covered our sins. Jesus paid God's unpayable price to permanently bridge our valley of sin. And when Jesus died on the cross, just like the song says, Jesus paid a debt he did not owe, but we owed a debt to God for our sin that we couldn't even begin to pay. And Jesus knows because of our sin debt that we are guilty. And we're the ones that deserve to die, though Jesus was innocent of death. He loved us enough that he died for us. And not only did he die for us, he lives for us. And he is in heaven right now interceding for us as our mediator, testifying to God that we are his and that our sins are forgiven. This is why Jesus truly is the only way to the Father. 
He is the only one worthy to pay the price for our sins. Jesus paid our sin debt in full. Our debt had been paid. We're free to go. When Jesus died, he redeemed us from the bondage of sin, purchased us with his shed blood on the cross. Redeemed means that Jesus purchased us, bought us back, pulled us out of that quicksand. This is why you cannot earn salvation by your works. Whatever you think makes you good enough, whatever makes you think you're worthy of heaven, you may be saying that you're not perfect, but you never stole anything, you never killed anybody, you never done drugs, whatever it may be. If you think you can enter heaven without Jesus, it will fail. The Bible is clear that Jesus is the door to get into heaven. And if you try to enter heaven another way, the Bible calls you a thief and a robber. Now you may be saying God's a loving God and God will not send you into hell. You're right. God is a loving God, but the price of bread that value of sin is so high, your works will never pay for the first brick. In fact, you can't even live long enough for your works to pay for the first brick. You can't buy your way into heaven. Neither can your works earn your way into heaven. That's why we must receive Jesus to our life as Lord. If we could pay for just one bit of our salvation, Jesus would have never had to come and die on the cross. But God knows that we'll never be good enough to earn salvation on our own. That's why Jesus came and died on the cross. Jesus is the only one who lived a perfect sinless life and became the substitute for our sins. And just like your works cannot buy your way into heaven, your salvation is not based on the salvation of someone else. There's no legacy to get into heaven. Just because mama or grandma was saved, that doesn't mean that you're saved. You must individually accept Jesus' free gift. The Bible says whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. This is a free gift of eternal life, a life living with God forever in a world where God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. There will be no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, no more addiction, no more depression, no more sickness, no more disease, no more suffering, no more feeling alone, no more death. All the burdens of this world will be no more. And if you never call the name of Jesus, don't wait till you get a point in time in your life where you feel ready to come to Jesus, go to church, or read your Bible. Don't wait till you overcome addiction. Don't wait till your finances are secure. Or whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now. Go to God right now. Jesus loves you. Jesus will help you through any and everything that you're going through. And please do not think that you're unlovable, unworthy, unsavable. Satan the ceiling will fall down if you come to Jesus, if you go to church, or if you read your Bible. Now you may have had some self-righteous person in your life tell you you're a sinner and going to hell. That person is not Jesus, and that person does not represent Jesus. Because through our works, none of us are savable, lovable, worthy. The Bible says our righteousness are as filthy rags. That means our perfectness in God's eyes are as bloody rags. That's why Jesus came and died for us all. Jesus knows that we're not perfect. So no matter what you may have done in your past, no matter what you may be doing right now, I believe that as long as there's breath in your body, there's a chance. And if anything that I've said today sounds like a Jesus you want to get to know, then I believe that that is God calling out to you today, telling you that you are savable, you are lovable, you are worthy. So don't ignore God's call. Turn to Jesus today. Jesus loves you. Jesus will not condemn you. In fact, Jesus will help you through any and everything that you're going through. So don't wait. Go to God now. Today is a day of salvation and it's so simple. Admit you're not perfect. Admit you don't have everything out. Figure it out. This means admitting you're a sinner. Admit you're a sinner. Admit that you can't do this on your own, that you need a Savior. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe that Jesus is Lord. Believe that Jesus died for you and Jesus paid the price for your sins on the cross. And Jesus was buried and God rose him from the dead on the third day. Now Jesus lives for you and intercedes. And if you want that, call out to God today. Confess your sins and repent. Repent means that you're turning away from your sins. You're going to have a change of your mind, a change of heart. You're doing a 180, making a U-turn, changing your behavior. When you repent, you tell God that you're sorry for breaking his rules. But more than that, it means that you see things as God sees them. This makes you want to obey his rules and not do the wrong things again. And you do not need someone telling you your faults, kicking you while you're down. You need someone who's going to pick you up. You are so loved by God. You're so special by God. When God formed you with his hands and placed you inside your mother's womb, God created you into the beautiful, unique person that you are. And God had a plan for your life. And like any good parent, God, who is our Heavenly Father, only wants the best for you. So seek Jesus today. Jesus is coming soon. We can see all the signs that Jesus talked about happening worldwide. Wars, sicknesses, natural disasters. If you doubt that we're living in the end times, we have a questionnaire in the description box called Do You Think We're in the End Times? Take the quiz. Feel free to give us your answers in the comments section. And I think if you're really paying attention to the world around you, 
you will see that we are truly living in the end times. And before you say we've always had wars and sicknesses and natural disasters, let me say, yeah, you're right. We have. But now, as predicted in the Bible, this is all happening worldwide and like birth pains. These end time events are happening more frequently and more intensely. So do not wait. Do not put Jesus off. Go to God now and give your life to Jesus today while you still have the opportunity. We covered in the gospel earlier that Jesus already paid the price. It's a free ticket waiting for you to enter into heaven and you have the opportunity today to turn to Jesus before it's too late. This is your wake up call. Jesus is coming back very soon. Bible prophecy has jumped off the page. You don't have time to wait. And whether you believe that Jesus is coming back soon or not, it doesn't matter. Because the Bible is clear that we are not guaranteed tomorrow. There's no guarantee that we'll live to see the sunrise tomorrow. Tomorrow may be one day too late. So please turn to Jesus today. Well, I pray you got something out of the video today. If you did, give God glory. Can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Or hopefully, we'll see you in the clouds.